I think, I think maybe. But we had no idea that Now or Never was ever going to be the first single that radio would start playing or that people would really start picking up on. We thought it would be like, you know, too little too late. It didn't make the record. Yeah. It almost didn't make the record. Yeah, actually. So, there you go. Keep everything. <laughs> Don't erase anything in your life. Because you never know. From uh, Broken Busted, this is for Matt specifically. <laughs> Being a former drummer, do you find yourself wanting to add an input into Kevin's tracks when you're writing new songs? That's probably taboo, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Jay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's good. Okay. <laughs> it's an understanding. Between me and him, so we do our jobs. All right, guys. It's an understanding between everybody because we all chime in on parts. Yeah. I'll tell Kevin, like, hey, try this drum part, or Matt will say, hey, how about this part, or Tim will say, how about this. It's all just kind of. Oh, yeah, but, but keep it, you know, it's, it's kept within boundary. Nobody steps on anybody's toes. It's, you know, it's just offering suggestions, giving ideas, you know, hopefully that somebody can possibly capitalize and, you know, make the best out of something. Uh, Broken Busted did say any time, Matt. <laughs> 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 um, guys, we're, uh, we're going to go a little bit past three just because we actually, thank That's you everyone for those great questions yeah. and you can keep them coming, but I want to give the guys a chance to, uh, to talk about Panacea uh, kind of historically, where it started, um, how it came. I've heard the story, I think it's awesome, um, and they've never had a chance to say it this way, so uh, take it away, whoever wants to start it. Um, so back in uh, 2002, uh, I was living in New York, in uh, Queens, well, Brooklyn at the time, and uh, I lost my job, <laughs> and I couldn't afford my rent and my brownstone. So my friend uh, Andy Wojtovich, I don't know if you're tuning in, but what's up to you? Um, he offered to drive his truck up and pick me up, and I fit whatever I could fit in the back of his truck and moved back to Bloomsburg, Pennsylvania, the bustling metropolis. Um, so I totally bailed on my rent, and if my old landlord's watching, sorry dude, but <laughs> I didn't really have a lease, so hold on. Um, so yeah, so we moved back and we ended up starting this band. And, uh, you know, we, Andy had been jamming with uh, our friend Mike Morgan and Kevin, sort of, you know, on and off here and there. And that's how Kevin and I met. Um, and then we started playing for... I guess about a year and a half or so, right? And we went through some other guitar players and whatnot. Hard change, lots of changes in this band. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then when did you come on board? 2004? In 2004. Yeah. So 2004, Paul joined, and we had uh, we were two guitar players at that point, and then our other guitar player bounced. Uh, life happens, so whatever, no our feelings. And then, um, you've been here for two years, right? About two years. Yeah, so two years ago we picked Matt up, and uh, incidentally, back to that other question, Matt was a drummer um, prior to being in this project, so he was in a sort of jam band, or kind of... That was like... That international sign of jam band. Like yeah, hip, hippie rock. Right. Something like that. Hippie. <laughs> hippie rock. Yeah. So that... Um, <laughs> That's pretty much it. Yeah. <laughs> so, and then, you know, we get this question a lot, like, where did you find the name Panacea? And, um, and it's nothing special. It really isn't special, and we're going to share it with you. It's, it's about it. So, Andy Wojtovich, uh, one of the original members of the band, a friend of mine, was, uh, of ours, was, we were, he and I were sitting in a bar, and we were drinking beers, and it was before the band had ever had a rehearsal, before we ever really, like, played out. And we were talking about, you know, what band names we could come up with and whatever. So this guy, who I had never seen before, and I've never seen him since, walked by and said, hey guys, I overheard a conversation, and I thought a cool band name would be Panacea. And we were like, okay, dude, whatever. And, uh, so a drunk guy in a bar. Drunk guy in a bar basically named the band. Yeah, so <laughs> random dude. And then it took us about two or three weeks to remember what the name was. And said it because we couldn't pronounce it. We forgot what it was. <laughs> We're like, what was it? Panasonic? What no, was <laughs> That's my TV. So we had to like try to look it up and find this word that meant a cure for all disease because we couldn't remember what it was. Panacea. And then, so we just kept it temporarily just to have something to start with. And it stuck. And that was, that's kind of the story with the band name. And now people also ask what's up with the dots, which I just want to settle this once and for all. Stop asking about the dots. <laughs> <laughs> the dots, it's a, the phonetic spelling, it serves two purposes. One, to help people pronounce it, which 
doesn't exactly work. And also, uh, it's part of our trademark, um, because you can't trademark just a word. You have to trademark a logo of some sort. If any of you know Lee Millard, it's his fault. Lee oh, Millard. is it Lee? Yeah, no. Lee created it first, the first thing. Lee Millard was our first artist, and we said, hey man, we need a logo, run with it. And our original Panacea logo, um, he put the phonetic dots in there, made it look like old typewriter font, and it was really, you yeah. know, really freaking cool. And uh, that's where the dots came from. So if you know Lee Millard, go after him if you don't like it. <laughs> and Lee and Lisa, uh, yes. <laughs> All right, guys. So that's our that's our history. And yeah, yeah and as far as we're going, more questions or? I think we're <laughs> dots are here to stay. <laughs> and as far as our, you know, just our future, uh, what we're doing moving forward. Um, uh, a couple months ago, people were aware we shot a music video. It's still currently being uh, edited, but it will be out hopefully in the next week or two. So we're going to keep you posted on that. Uh, Bare Bones is in stores now. Um, FYE in stores Tuesday. It, well, yeah, yeah, FYE on Tuesday. It's in Gallery of Sound now, right? Tuesday. Oh, Tuesday as well? Yeah. Oh, all right. iTunes now. <laughs> <laughs> iTunes. Some sort of idea iTunes, Amazon, Best Buy, you know, find it online. Uh, it was the um, fan voted, you know, on their, their favorite songs, and that's what we made the record out of. Uh, and we've got some great shows coming up. We're playing with the Badleys coming up. We've got some shows in Wilkes-Barre. We've got some shows in you know, the Reading area. Just we're spreading out more and more. And uh, these new photos are going to be coming out very shortly. After we have a lunch and we break, we're also going to go upstairs uh, to the large room and we're going to shoot another music video for Don't Walk Away. Um, so that's going to be fun. And that's going to come out probably in a month or so, you know, three, four weeks, somewhere in there, right in time for Christmas. And uh, we also have some actually really big, exciting news that's going to be taking place here shortly, but uh, by contract, we're not allowed to discuss it yet. Uh, so. Keep it, you know, keep it tuned. PanaceaRock.com. Check us out on Facebook, MySpace, Twitter. You can follow us on Twitter. Uh, all of that stuff. So, tune in. You know, tell your friends. And as soon as we uh, are allowed, we will uh, share some more info with you. There's a good question that I can see you two are like chuckling over there. Yeah, let's let's just let's spit it. it. Let's go. Oh, okay. Well, it started off with something about giants. Like, does it really irritate you that the giants? Suck this year? It's yeah, it does. It does <laughs> actually. It does actually <laughs> irritate because they're probably Eagles fans who have a dog killer okay. uh, quarterback. But uh, <laughs> it, it moved on. It moved on shortly from there to what is your favorite Panacea moment to date, on or off stage? That is a tight question. Ooh, Dude, get to work, guys. Oh man, showman. You mean like from last night? <laughs> <laughs> this Snickers really sucks. Last night was crazy. Um, man. Well, that's hard to narrow that down to one. Just what don't think too hard about it. Yeah, one of my favorite moments, and it might not be like the ultimate, my ultimate favorite, but the first thing that pops in my head is when we played, uh, we played Dewey Beach in Delaware, and after the show, we got drunk, and we were, we were, we were out on the beach at like five o'clock in the morning, just hanging out on the beach with like the ocean. And I, I love the beach, I love the ocean, I like being drunk. So that was a, that was a good time. It was just. Chaos. It was fantastic. Cool. Well, man, oh, there's so many things. That's a great mind. question, but it blows my mind. I yeah, try there's so many moments with like, like playing with the Badleys. Like they've just had so many awesome stories. Or like, and just working with Brett Alexander, our producer and saturation makers. Um, hearing stories because our manager Terry Selders, uh, such my entertainment little plug there. Um, check him out. Sussend.com, I think. Don't look, don't look. Mm -hmm. You can link to it. anyway. Um, <laughs> He used to manage the Badleys back in the day, so like hearing their stories from back then, and then like telling them our stories of you and know, how they all match up. Yeah, and just the craziness that they went through and the craziness we go through. So like, it's kind of like hear their stories from years ago and hear our stories now, how similar they are and how we can exchange stories with them. You know, it's one of those if you if you weren't on the road, you just you almost wouldn't get it. Yeah, you wouldn't, <laughs> get, it. You wouldn't get it. You're probably not allowed to know anyway. Because right. it happens on the road. Stays on the road. Well, this one's not going to stay on the road because everybody needs a little chuckle in their life. And this was something that I remember. It's not it a chapstick story, is it? No, no, no. <laughs> That's a good one. Uh, when Mike Morgan was in the band, I remember it was 2005, 2006. We played a concert for a cause. And uh, we are notorious for having after parties. 
and we got kicked out of our first two rooms at the Woodlands. <laughs> Went to a third room, which was a penthouse, I might add. And uh, by five in the morning, you could not see the floor because of the beer cans and bottles. And all I remember, I'm probably getting in trouble for saying this, but I really don't care. Uh, I remember waking up in the morning and looking over at Mike and looking up at the ceiling and seeing two lamps glued to the ceiling. Because that's what we did. <laughs> and there were uh, counterparts in the room with us whose names will remain on whatever you want to call it. Unsaid, yes. But uh, I remember was Mike's face and I woke up and a cigarette in his hand going, that's right, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> that's typical Mike and that was uh, that's just a, a rock and roll moment, I guess. And uh, we still didn't pay for those lamps and beer cans are probably still there. Sorry, Mitch. This bitch is very good to us in the woodlands, but uh, yeah. <laughs> There you go. Okay. Oh my god, I can't even think of one, honestly. Uh, this band has just been, what, is it eight years now? Going on nine. Going on nine? Going on nine. It's been like nine years of just complete, just hysterical yes. chaos. Bad, I mean, good times, bad times. We look back at some of the bad, some of the things we've done, you know, it's almost freezing to death in Altoona when our bus broke down. True story. Um, you can hear the ice cracking on the windows. And, um, we had a light of fire outside and like burn yeah, yeah, we could set things on fire at a gas station, like right next to the pumps. We had a fire going. Uh, it's just good times, bad times. There have been so many things and so 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 many of these stories that I can't even tell you because it would incriminate so many people. Most but, of me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Most of the guys sitting right here. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I am the instigator. I guess I'm still the instigator. How <laughs> <laughs> about yours? What do you got? Just I, got a, I, got a, I got a good kind of see a story to put on the topic of when Matt first came down to the first rehearsal to try out for the band. Oh, uh, Matt's and audition. I'm like, I'm, and I am like, Mr. I'm just your super critical prick of everything. No. And Matt comes down. Yeah. Matt comes down. Here comes this guy comes down. I'm like, oh, whatever. I really don't care. I'm pissed off at something or something or another. Probably. That. Yeah, and uh, and that comes down. And he's playing the songs, and I'm watching him play, and I'm like, what is he doing? And he's playing the songs like all over the place on the bass, and I, I finally go, all right, stop. What in the hell are you doing? He goes, what do you mean? I go, you're all out of position. He goes, well, I go, what tuning are you in? And he goes, standard. I'm like, go home and relearn the songs <laughs> because he played them all in the wrong key. <laughs> Every song. Learned them all in the wrong key. And, and, and as, as Matt, as Matt left, left position, and, did not know that I was in standard position. And as Matt left, and, and lying all over the dead place. And Matt left, and we all sat there kind of looking at each other. And I said, there is no way in hell this guy is playing with us because he doesn't even know what tuning we play. And Tim talked to me for a couple of days and said, let's give him another chance. I'm like. All right, we'll give this clown another chance. We come down to tuning, and well, it was a good chance because well, I kind of like that. He makes a good borscht. Yes. <laughs> so that's that's a fun story. Too. Yeah, that's all. And you know, if you want to hear more stories, you're just gonna have to tune in next time we do something like this. Oh. Or get to a show and ask us there. Or get to a show, there. yeah. Or get to a show and be involved in your own fantasy story because. Everybody's everybody's included when we go. When we start drinking, we're getting crazy. It's yes. all it's so good fun. There. Well, like the time we got thrown out of the uh, social club. <laughs> <laughs> How about that? Yeah. 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 Whoops. There's recent news. When was that? Uh, a couple weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> We're not, yeah. I'm not allowed in Sunbury, Northumberland, or Seawinds Grove for a little while. There's a couple of large tins not allowed in. We yes. talk about that. You talk about that. You talk about that. You talk about that. I don't ever remember getting thrown out, so. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, we're going to cut it for a little bit. Oh, cool. We'll thank come you. back in really quick. Yeah. Real fast, guys. Let me get in here. Uh, thank you, everyone. The guys for doing this. It was super cool. And to agree to it. Uh, Jeff Haskell for being super techno geek. Uh, there we go. <laughs> Dan Pettich, who you will probably never see or hear, is the smartest guy I've ever met. He's going to be working on their uh, the video side of it, the editing and whatnot. Hey, Dan. Yeah. So, yeah. uh, Daniel Oz Studios, he's like... Seriously, a killer photographer. I just wish I could shoot like him someday. Uh, Julie's here now. She's going to be working on the video with us. And, Yay, and, uh, Julie. Juan is here. So we're going to take a quick break, eat, set up, and we'll be back live in a little while to do some uh, music video stuff. So thanks a lot.